Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Coming up today on Harvest, Pete Dyson lived a life full of joy when tragedy struck. The author opens up about the incredible comfort he discovered with help from heaven. And Brian Bush joins us with some good news for tough times in today's Holy Land moment entitled, Nothing is Impossible with God. And King Solomon may have lived thousands of years ago, but his words of wisdom are still relevant today. We'll discover why in part two of Today's Connections. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thankful Thursday here <laughs> on The Harvest Show. Now, I can't take credit for that. I ran into our colleague, uh, Darlene Johnson, in Partner Services, and oh. she says, Today is Thankful Thursday, and uh, we should remember that. And I have to tell you, Chuck, I am a little thankful because my team won last night. Have you been watching the playoffs? I have not <laughs> been watching the NBA Finals. I, I'm just not into the NBA these days, but I'm happy for you and, and the Golden State fans that are out there. I know uh, our, my man Joe Fertina has a very sullen look on his face back in oh, uh, yeah. production today. <laughs> so, you know, we have some people who are for the Cavaliers mm -hmm. and we have some people who are for Golden State. So we'll leave it right there. But you have an uh, incredible story for well, us today. Well, th this is good to see because all we hear about these mm -hmm. days is conflict between Muslims and Christians. And, and it's great to see that in Mosul, a city that has really been torn apart in this Iraq war, uh, that people are starting to come together as that city gets liberated from the grip of Islamic State. Muslims and Christians are coming together to, um, well, rebuild a monastery that is there that has been there for thousands of years. The monastery belongs to the Chaldean Catholic tradition. It's an Eastern Catholic rite in full communion with the Vatican. And ISIS militants had gone in and vandalized this monastery. They smashed the windows. They damaged the church that was there. And so now the Muslim community and the Christian community are coming together to try to rebuild this 17th century mm -hmm. monastery. Um, and they say, God willing, the celebration of the resurrection of Christ will also mark the return and rising up of Christians in Iraq. So they've recently celebrated Easter there. They mm -hmm. had... Uh, typical church services there in the monastery and they're trying to rebuild it back up so that people have a place to worship in Iraq. That's right and these are young Muslims and Christians coming together and you know it's something about persecution it'll make you put your differences aside and come together and this is what great news we want to hear you know I remember several years ago when uh, the islands of Nineveh, Nineveh were destroyed right. and some 3.3 million according to this article um, Iraqis were displaced, Christians were displaced, but sometimes I think when we hear these stories, we, we probably just tend to think about people that we have something in common with. Right. In this case, Christians, but Muslims, Christians, moderates, all have been affected by what's going on over there. Well, and, and without trying to get political about it, but I think that's one of the things President Trump was trying to bring up in the recent trip, especially when he was in Riyadh, and the address that he made to the Muslim governments there was, this isn't just about the West being persecuted by terrorism. This is about all of that's us right. that's trying it. to be, deal with this problem. Deal with the issue, and that's why we certainly need to continue to pray for our sisters and brothers who are being persecuted uh, for their faith and, and just living in a, a country that's torn by war. Hey, we want to join, we want you to join our conversation. <laughs> you can hit us up on Facebook and Twitter and send your emails directly to the Set of Harvest at live at .com. Stay with us. World News begins in just a moment. Friends, it's Thursday, June 8, 2017, and here's what's happening in your world. The former FBI Director James Comey will testify today that President Donald Trump sought his loyalty and asked what could be done to lift the cloud of investigation shadowing the Trump White House. Comey will also tell lawmakers he informed Trump the president was not personally under investigation, validating the president's previous claims he was not the target of the probe into the Russian investigation. His statement reads more like a Tom Clancy novel 
than your usual garden variety congressional testimony. I think most of it uh, seems like it's already been leaked in the press over the last uh, few weeks, so I, I didn't see anything uh, that struck me as uh, particularly new. According to Comey, Trump asked if he wanted to remain as FBI director and declared, I need loyalty, I expect loyalty. Comey says he replied he could offer his honesty, and that's when Trump said he wanted honest loyalty. Britons are visiting their polling stations across the country today in an election to choose a new government. Voters will choose 650 lawmakers for the House of Commons. Prime Minister Theresa May called the snap election in the hope of increasing her Conservative Party's slim majority in Parliament and strengthening her hand in the European Union exit talks. Iran's intelligence minister today visited Iranian parliament security personnel who were wounded during Wednesday's attacks in Tehran. Mahmoud Alavi told State TV at the hospital over 100 similar operations by Islamic State have been diffused over the last two years. Authorities have raised the death toll in the twin attacks on Iran's parliament and the tomb of its revolutionary leader to 17 people killed. As Kurdish-led Syrian forces launch an offensive to capture the northern Syrian city of Raqqa, analysts believe the United States is playing an important role in the decision-making process. Since Turkey has a huge stake in the Syrian crisis, once the operation in Raqqa becomes a seesaw battle like the Mosul offensive, the Turkish role will then be expanded. Syria's government is hoping the push for Raqqa will strengthen its position in next week's peace talks that will be held in Kazakhstan. And South Florida is dealing with heavy rains and flooding. Rainstorms are common in Florida during hurricane season, which began last week. But some residents think this year's current flooding is particularly you bad. You step out the door, as soon as you step off the steps, you're six inches there. And if you walk any further, you're up to your knees. Weather officials reported 10 or more inches of rain have fallen across parts of South Florida this week. Fish were seen swimming in the streets, and one resident said flooded yards we're filled with them. At least there's no alligators. Still to come, Brian Bush with today's Holy Land moment. But up next, author Pete Dyson shares how he overcame grief with comfort from the other side. We're right back with that story after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Welcome back to the set of Harvest. Pete and Harriet Dyson were enjoying a full life of being grandparents and partners in ministry when deep depression spiraled Har Harriet into a darkness that caused her to take her own life. Pete returns to the show to talk more about his project, project called Visits from Heaven. You've come back to encourage so many people who are going through this situation and have dealt with a loved one committing suicide. Let's talk about that for a moment. We'll mm -hmm. get the backstory um, for our viewers to, who didn't get a chance to see your first interview, right. but let's talk about the issue of suicide and mental health in the church. Yes. You are a reverend and an associate pastor in a church. Mm -hmm. Has that perception changed any? Uh, I think over time, yes, it has. Uh, uh, some in the past, some people have considered, well, is that uh, the unforgivable sin, or un, you know, it can't be pardoned, or what have you. But I think if you read the scriptures very clearly, the the, uh, the scriptures very clearly say the unpardonable sin is not trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior, mm -hmm. um, and uh, every sin is forgivable. Suicide is self-murder, so. David was forgiven of murder, um, and therefore um, it, it is a forgivable sin. Now, the, the problem is, is that people would say, well, then does that give people going through really hard, hard times an out, so to speak? Uh, and no, it does not in that sense that it is still a very serious sin because you are destroying the image of God you are uh, shortening a life that God intended to be longer. You are taking away from the use of your own gifts and, uh, and the rewards you might have in heaven that you would lose from further living and what have you. Uh, I talk about this in the book that uh, it, is, it is something that's um, forgivable, but at the same time, 
it means that you've lost your vision of God and what God can do for you. And what people need to see is how valuable life is to God, mm -hmm. how important this life is to God. It's a gift. Now, you shared with us before that your wife was going through deep depression. Right. She, and it's something that was in her family, down yeah. her, in her family lineage. I mean, after the day after all of this happened, God even started dealing with your heart then to trust him right. and to bring encouragement to you. Correct. What happened? Well, I had to, to really think through that issue because, and I studied suicide and began to realize that there are, uh, there are different kinds of suicide. Mm -hmm. People who do something out of anger at someone else, I'll show you, uh, are out of a huge loss of money or a job or something and, they, and it's more of a circumstantial thing. Those are things that that that's when a person can be talked through this to realize, wait a minute, there, there, there are answers to that. Depression, uh, which again, there are degrees of depression too. We all suffer certain types of depression. We, we, get, we have circumstantial times where we just are down, you know. And, uh, and yet there is such a thing as what we would call a biological, you know, chemically induced depression that people have. And this is what... Uh, 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 pastors, psychologists and stuff have come to realize is truly an illness uh, and uh, I'm not opposed to medications you know for people doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife took medications for probably 40 years and they kept her level and, mm -hmm. and she had a very full exciting you know life in that time. Um, but uh, but a friend, a, a fellow at my church that came to see me right after her death said uh, he, he said, I've been on a suicide watch twice in my life. Mm. And he said, I've suffered from clinical depression. He said, I really can understand why she did what she did. Mm -hmm. Because when you get into that kind of a depression, it's like a tunnel vision. You can see nothing else. You, it's a blackness, a darkness that you cannot, you, you, you lose your picture of hope. Uh, and that's when you need all kinds of people you know, around you to help you. Mm -hmm. Pete, you mentioned that uh, in Visits from Heaven that the, the veil between heaven and earth is far more transparent than we think. Why do you say that? Well, for several reasons. Um, angels in the scriptures seem to appear just suddenly, disappear mm -hmm. suddenly. Uh, an example in the Old Testament where Elisha is servant, you know, steps outside and sees the Syrian army and Elisha says, Lord, open his eyes. Boom, all of a sudden there's heavenly angels all around. Um, and um, when Stephen is stoned, yeah. he looks up and boom, there's Jesus standing beside the throne, it says. So uh, heaven is, is much closer than we realize. It's mm -hmm. probably more like a, a, you know, my, a, a dimensional kind of thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's not far, far away. Mm -hmm. You also say that there's evidence that our, of our personalities, talents, and gifts continue, you know, after we pass on and go to heaven. Right. What, right. Uh, what proof do you have for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a couple of things. In the Old Testament, which this is kind of a negative example, but where Saul seeks Samuel, and he goes to a witch at Endor, which was a forbidden, you know, but nevertheless, the witch, who's extremely surprised, you know, Samuel shows up. But he's still acting as a prophet. He still remembers what's going on. And he says, you know, why are you disturbing me? Because tomorrow you will be with me. Uh, and he knows what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. to see, so he under, he's acting in his prophetic role. Hmm. In the transfiguration, Moses and Elijah are representing the, the law and the prophets are speaking to Jesus about his fulfillment and his imminent return. They seem to be recognizable by the disciples who are, think they're so solid they want to build tabernacles for them, little, little huts, you know, celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. So there is a, uh, there's a great sense that everyone is continuing their own lifestyle. Hmm. Even Jesus said of Abraham, he said, Abraham looked forward to my day and he has seen it. He sees mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So Abraham is watching earth and he is excited about seeing the life of, of Christ there. Talking about seeing, uh, you said there are three lenses mm -hmm. or different lenses by which we can, can uh, see heaven or, or, or perceive right. heaven. What, what are those? Right. Well, the first is, is the biblical fact. 
you go to the scriptures, this is what we clearly know about heaven. And there's a lot there. It's just never put in one book or one place. It's just scattered, you know, it's there. Um, so that's the biblical lens. Secondly is the lens of logic, that if this is true and that is true, then probably what's in between is true as well. You know, for example, we are given the gift of, we're given spiritual gifts, all right? Romans 11 says that the gifts of God are permanent, okay? And my wife had the gift of encouragement, all right? That was her spiritual gift. And in dreams that other people had about her, they all mentioned she was encouraging them. Mm. So I had the sense of, well, possibly our spiritual gifts in some form continue, continue. Mm -hmm. in some way. Okay, so Pete, you can tell me it's none of my business, but I'm just kind of curious. Are you dating or have you remarried? And I ask you that for a reason, for the person who's saying, well, if you focus so much on heaven and what's going to take place there and what is taking mm -hmm. place there, right. then God has other plans, may have other plans for your life, but we could be so focused on heaven that, you know, what we're doing here on earth, we don't get a chance to fulfill that. So you can answer the first question if no, you like. No, uh, I, I really haven't dated. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I haven't been to dinner with friends and someone's been there that the friends were, tr quote, trying to set me up, you know, this type of thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but what I will say is the scripture very clearly says that when death occurs, mm -hmm. the bond, the physical bond or the contract of marriage is over, okay? You're free to remarry. There's no rule against remarrying. Um, but someone might say, well, well, when you get to heaven and you have two husbands or two wives or what are you going to do? Well, well, that question was even asked of Jesus in the Bible. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he has a very interesting answer. He says, he says, first of all, he says, you don't understand the scriptures. And secondly, you don't understand the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask myself, what scriptures is he referring to? And I think he's referring to the very Genesis scriptures, which speaks about the fact that a man and a woman are created as co-equals in this world. There is no, um, uh, there's no difference in their value, their person, uh, their individualness and what have you. The, the, after the fall, you have uh, the current marriage put in place because of the sin nature uh, and a man and a woman, and so someone has to, quote, like a dance, has to take the first step. That's mm -hmm. a role of, of a man. And a woman's asked to have a role that, that during this time. But when she gets to heaven, she won't have that role. Mm -hmm. She'll be an independent, you know, you might say, queen, like he's a king. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's the power of God. It'll be different in heaven. Uh, and we don't have a sin nature anymore. So there's Praise no God. jealousy. Mm -hmm. There's no comparison or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you'll, so you'll be good friends in heaven, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> we all will be. <laughs> to connect with Pete, go That's to right. visitsfromheaven.com or go to harvest-tv.com to get a link to the new project. It's called Visits from Heaven. Harvest continues in just a moment. Here in Malawi in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by making healthy choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, a vegan prebiotic powder, powerful probiotic blend plus, a formula that promotes regularity and contains absolutely no gluten. Liquid Multigels, a multivitamin with lutein, lycopene, and flaxseed oil, and Mineral Concentrate for maximum cell function and better focus. The all-natural ingredients in the Restoration Pack may help lower inflammation and in some cases impact weight loss. To order the new Restoration Pack for just $59.95 plus free shipping, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. That's 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you.
Hello, everybody. Did you see the America's Got Talent contestant who is deaf? And she sang and played so beautifully that she was given the so-called golden buzzer pass straight to the big live show. Now, this reminded me of Luke 1, verse 37. Nothing is impossible with God. I think the word impossible may be the one word in God's vocabulary that he laughs at the most. Look, I'm here in the Holy Land. I go to Bethlehem, where the virgin gave birth. Jericho, where the walls came tumbling down. Galilee, where Jesus walked on the water. Calvary, where a thief repented minutes before his death and entered into paradise. And yes, I have passed through Dicopolis, where Jesus healed a deaf man. Being humans who have rebelled against God, we constantly deal with not listening to God. What he has asked of us generally to do has fallen upon deaf ears. But the gift of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read his word God is wanting to do the impossible in your life. And thank God that it is him only who can open our spiritual ears. The golden buzzer for our lives is the gift of faith that God gives. Make the impossible possible today. Well, on Tuesday, we started talking about a subject I've entitled Commencement. How do you handle it when God graduates you from one season of life to the next? The first thing I told you was that the seasons of life are never permanent. Now, here's the second thought as we go back to Ecclesiastes chapter number three. The seasons of life always produce. Something new is coming out of you through this season. Look in verse 11 of our text. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. He set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. You know what I love about the work of God is that he doesn't start at the beginning. He starts at the end. He starts with the vision of the finished product and then he works his way backward to bring the experiences of life that you and I need in order to produce the product that God desires from our life. Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah 46 and 10, that God declares the end from the beginning. And my friend, what God sees in the end, it's beautiful. Now, it may not always be beautiful in the beginning. And that's why many times in life we reject those unpleasant experiences because we don't see how beautiful that they're going to be at the end of our lives. It may be painful at the beginning, but guess what? that pain will produce the character that you need for the next season of your life. And that leads me to this last point. The seasons of life, they're providential. Even when things get messy, they're providential. Look in verse 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken away from it. Solomon reminds us that you know what? You don't need to add anything. You don't need to take anything away from what God is doing in your life right now. And I think too many times we as humans, what we like to think is that we've got to fix everything. But friends, sometimes there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can fix. And most of the time, there's nothing that God wants us to do. He simply wants us to do what the psalmist said in Psalm 46, when he said, be still, know that I am God, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. My friends, stop trying to fix something that God has already made perfect. There's nothing you can do to add to what God has already done. And if you're in this season of transition, the Lord is saying simply just wait. Wait upon me. Be still. Let me be God. Step back and let God do what he needs to do in order to complete that which needs to be done. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to thy word. The C Broadcasting is dedicated to getting thousands of free Bibles into the hands of young people around the world this year. Will you help? Call 1-800-365-3732 today. Well, we have tried to offer you a lot of words of encouragement today, but we know that many of you are going through difficult situations, whether it's 
depression or unemployment or marital difficulties or maybe all three, but whatever you're going through, if you need somebody to talk to, if you need somebody to come into agreement with, give us a call, 1-800-365-3732. If it's easier, type it out and email it to us at prayeratwithc.com. You can see what other people are praying about at worldharvest.com or put a stamp on it and send it to 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. That prayer line opened 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and as the show was going on, we were talking about how busy they are at all hours of the day. That's right, so whether you're calling at five o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock um, in the afternoon, be sure to give us a call. We have volunteers who are standing by, waiting to pray with you to receive your praise reports. And remember, Pastor Charles would also like to receive your photos so we can put them up and pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Harvest Show. We'll see you again tomorrow. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Do you long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.